Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, have a look at the price. Boom! It's come down a little bit. The whole market down seven point three percent. So, Bitcoin was pushing up to all-time highs, and it's been pushed right down. Fifty-nine thousand. We can see up here about fifty-nine thousand one to uh, one hundred and twenty-eight. Big games are at play. That's basically what it is. The big players. They are going to do everything they can to shake you out. And that's literally what's happening here. We don't have a whole lot of retail FOMO just yet. So this really is big players yeah, playing games. This is whale games going on right now, 100%. There's not enough of the retail. I mean, there could be a little bit of retail FOMO. But again, they're really not here just yet. It's not until they kind of hear that Bitcoin's at you know, 80,000, 100,000 that all of a sudden the people that have never really been into crypto are going to get back in. This is big players at foot. They're pushing prices up and then they're dumping them down, uh, taking profits quite quickly, traders and things like that. That's why I don't recommend trading uh, uh, and specifically like leverage trading. It's just too hard. You've got to be at it all day. You've got to be, you know, just hanging on the screens. You've got to really know your stuff. It's easier to just, you know, kind of invest. Look for, you know, points where you think it's going to retrace to. Buy in there. Wait for it to go up. Uh, and when you've made some, you know, good profit, take some profits. It just, it's way easier. Now, I never offer you financial advice. If you're a trader and you're good at it, congratulations. Not many traders are. Investing is a whole lot easier. It really is the easiest way. Uh, and generally, you're going to make more money than traders because most traders don't do well. That's just the facts. Most of them sort of lose money. Uh, you know, they have a couple of big ones here and there, but overall, it's just easier to be an investor. But again, that's never financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Please don't take anything I say as financial advice. But that is my personal opinion. And that's from someone who's been in this space for a little while and has learned, you know, all those hard lessons. I tried to trade and on occasions I do some breakout trades and swing trades and things like that. And look, on occasions they go well for me and other times they don't. I find that really just investing, waiting for, you know, things to be cheap, again, 50 plus percent down from their old all-time highs, man, that's when I love to buy stuff. I don't care if it goes down to 80 percent. I don't throw it all in at 50 percent. I keep buying in as it sort of continues to go down. But again, it, it depends on where it is in the cycle. It's not always 50 percent, but, you know, around about there is where I'm starting to get interested. And then I'll start to, you know, again, it's all dependent on more time uh, where I think things are in in the cycle but again you know this big dip that we just had we went from 60 all the way down to god will we get down to 29,000 or something and I mean I bought bitcoin at uh, 39,000 I bought it at 36,000 I bought it at uh, 34,000 I bought it at about 31,000 so yeah I just continued to buy it on the way down I didn't you know, worry too much. And look, if it had to kept going all the way down to 12,000, then so be it. I would have been just buying through the bear market and it meant I would have completely timed it wrong. That hasn't been what has happened, but look, that's the kind of risks you take. You know, investing is still risky as well, but it's just a whole lot easier than trading. And again, if you've seen the cycles and, you know, you've watched uh, not just Bitcoin, but crypto in general, four years, you just got to hold for four years. And if you're in a good project, let's, you know, specifically focus on Bitcoin, you're going to be up uh, based on previous history. Now, again, that doesn't guarantee anything in the future, but based on previous history, if you're unlucky enough and you bought at a higher price, just don't panic, you know, continue to dollar cost average, you know, wait till uh, it has a bottoming formation and then really start to dollar cost average hard. And, you know, you'll be well rewarded if history plays out again. That's what you got to remember. Now, I don't think we're in a bear market at the moment. I think this is, again, like I said, this is just big whale movement at the moment. They're coming in, getting out, and trying to shake everybody up, pumping up altcoins, trying to get people excited. You know, they're going up 20 30%, and then they're just taking profits, and they're going to dump down. You know, basically two-thirds of whatever they've made is probably where they're going to go down. So if you made 100% in the last seven days, you're probably only going to have 20% of gains left in the sort of next few days or in the next 24 hours. Now, that's, again, never financial advice. I've got to keep saying that. And that's not exact. It's just thereabouts. That's what the uh, these games kind of do. Again, it's like going up steps. 
you go up two but then you come down one you go up two and then you come down one so it's just up and down up and down until obviously you get to the top and then it's just the elevator <laughs> down very quickly whenever that may be but look let's move on uh, a little bit of volume there uh, Bitcoin there we go 58,000 I was gonna say when we get to the charts I think it's gonna go down to 58,000 so that's what it's showing at the moment could go lower ETH gas prices are high because people are panicking selling and then trying to get back into stable coins is most likely what's going on so let's have a look I mean it doesn't look good does it look big reds I mean even Bitcoin down 6% Ethereum down 4% BNB 5% 8% Solana whew. 8% XRP, 12% Doge, but look, Shiba, oh good lord, give me a break, up 27%, oh what a crazy market, alright, what's done well in the last 24 hours, we know Shiba Inu is up there, that's for sure, look, 1 inch actually outperformed it, boom, 62%, Aave up 22%, nice, I was talking about this not that long ago, I said it looks like everybody's just given up on it, and this is a DeFi blue chip that I think you know a lot of institutions are probably going to use in the future to be able to get uh, yield back on things. Now again, that's not confirmed, but Ave does have a financial uh, banking license. I think some kind of uh, banking license in Europe. They're looking to do that uh, in Asia, and then I think it'll just be you know moving on to all the places around the world and again they are bringing out Aave Pro for banks to use where everything is going to be KYC and AML I think it is your anti-money laundering and all that kind of stuff so hence why I thought Aave was a really good buy down at 300 and I mean look at that fantastic pump now don't get me wrong this could easily come back down uh, you know up 20% today maybe down 15% tomorrow but I still think Aave's got plenty of upside. So look, three amazing movers in a market that went down 7.3%. Then we got a couple of single digit movers and then we're getting into the red. So here's the horror show. What hasn't performed so well in the last 24 hours, particularly the last probably four hours is when it's really started to uh, dump. So there we go, Phantom 14, Ethereum Classic 13, EOS 13, Curve 13, uh, One Harmony 12, basically 13. I mean, look, lots of double digit losses right across the board, basically. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, 25 of the top 100. Uh, 26 of the top 100 were in double digit losses and there may still be more to come and then we've just got plenty of really high single digit losses but again we've been sort of fairly bullish for the last probably you know maybe five days or so and look some coins have been doing all right for probably a couple of weeks now this is what happens and again this is the big players they they're going to try and shake you out and if you're going to get shaken out that easy then you know this probably isn't the game for you hence why i say just invest buy and basically sort of forget buy on these kind of dips now can it go lower absolutely but maybe this is the bottom who knows but i want to be buying things when they're in the red not when they're in the green that's my strategy that's you know if you've been watching my channel that's how i do you've got to work it all out for yourself i can't tell you what to do i can just tell you what i do and I am looking to buy some of these dips at the moment. But we'll just have to wait and see. I'm not diving in just yet. I'm going to wait. There could be even further corrections to come. Uh, and, you know, I'll basically probably give it a few hours to maybe even tomorrow, see where it's at. Uh, and I'd say things will most likely bounce back a little bit. But let's go to the Bitcoin chart because it really is the chart that kind of tells us the most, in my personal opinion. Look at that. I was saying I thought I wouldn't surprise me if Bitcoin comes back down to here around 57, 58,000. Because look at all this confluence that we've got along here. At the moment, we got a little bit of confluence. This is probably, you know, getting close to the bottom around 59. We can see it got pushed down to 58, but it's been bought up pretty quick. So I'm really waiting to see if it's going to come down to about 57,500. Now, I'm not saying it's going to go there. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me. But what also wouldn't surprise me if it comes back and bounces off this upwards trending channel that we've been in for a really, really long time. Will it do it today, tomorrow? I don't know. I think there's definitely a chance where it kind of just bounces around, goes sideways over the weekend, has another dip and comes down to around about sort of here. Again, the 57 and a half ish thousand dollar mark is where I'd be looking for Bitcoin to get over the next few days. Now, 
Does it mean it's going to do it? Absolutely not. This could be the shakeout, and then again, it's off to the races. But we also need to keep in mind, maybe this is a double top. So not a dead cat bounce, because dead cat bounces don't come all the way back up. But maybe this is a double top with a fake out. Again, another little bit of a fake out, and then they're just going to push prices nice and low. A lot of people are expecting this big, crazy sort of blow-off top coming in November, December. And it still could happen. There's been a lot of charts out there from TechDev and you know other people saying it's playing out just like 2017. That is what kind of concerns me a little bit, is everyone is expecting that. So that's probably why it won't play out like that. It may well play out very similar, but it's just not going to be exactly the same. I think the blow-off top is more likely going to come later, but keep in mind, it could absolutely come earlier. And maybe Bitcoin doesn't get to the 100,000 that everyone's kind of predicting. Again, all the big players are thinking, yep, everyone else is going to sell around about 100, so I'm selling at 71 or 73 or 75 or you know 69 or something like that. That is something we need to keep in mind. It's just there's too many people, you know, making these predictions. And don't get me wrong, I like them. And even I make a few predictions here and there. But there's just too many people seeing this stuff going, oh, it's going to have this big blow off top uh, in December. And do you think everyone's going to sell at exactly the same time? Absolutely not. And again, we don't even have that retail FOMO yet at the moment. So it just makes me think there's going to be a whole lot of sort of funky stuff going on and we're going to push through December without any blow off top. And Nicholas Merton, Data Dash, has said that he believes this pushes out into the middle to later half of 2022. And I think he might be right. I think there's a definite possibility of that. But again, nothing's guaranteed in life. No one truly knows what's going to happen. We're all just making some sort of educated guesses. And I just, I think there's too many people singing the narrative that, you know, it's playing out like the 2013 or 2017 thing. And December's when it's all going to have a blow off top. <sighs> you know, I kind of hope that everyone's right because then everyone gets to be right and make a whole lot of money. But I just get the feeling, yeah, it won't play out that way. Bitcoin will either, either it's going to push out later or it's going to uh, crumble a whole lot earlier. And that's why this game is really hard when you're trying to time the market. And don't get me wrong, even I'm trying to. I'm hoping to you know, take some profits at really good times. But overall, I'm really just looking to buy on the dips more than uh, taking you know, lots of profits at the greatest times. If that works out, great. But that's saying time in the market generally beats trying to time the market and again we want to make things as simple as possible if you've put in the hours of research and you're a super trader and chart analysts and all the rest of it then awesome uh, if you're just an average kind of person yeah investing so much easier but also you just got to look at some of the on-chain data that's out there you know new pool and you know there's all sorts of different charts out there they're going to give you a pretty good indication of when things are getting a little bit too overheated and they're always good time to take profits. Anyway, moving on, just a couple of stories I wanted to focus on. So Tether are going to trial a solution to comply with the FATF travel rule. So this solution aims to make Tether USDT more friendly to law enforcement agencies all around the world and safer for users making transactions using Tether. So they really are going all out to become legit now. And I like this. Uh, I was truly worried about Tether, you know, failing and all the rest of it and, you know, this being this massive thing that would bring down the whole industry. But they finally have come out and got audited. Now, they weren't uh, pegged dollar for dollar like they said they were, but look, neither was USDC and they are issues that are going to have to be fixed. But the sort of issue with these stable coins is you go down here, it says traditional financial institutions dictates that the information of both parties doing a transaction must be shared by the institutions facilitating it to help uh, in the case of money laundering or terrorist financial activities. Now in cryptocurrency that can be really really hard but Tether are making an effort to do that and USDC is going to do the same you know and die and all the rest of it because while you know DAI is a little bit different. It's uh, decentralized and all the rest of it. But even they don't want the regulators coming after them. They're going to you know, try and do their best to be compliant and all the rest of it. Because believe it or not, while it's unlikely that regulators could kill crypto in general, 
they could really make a mess of it if their rules weren't abided by. And it really is, like, I'm fine with KYC. I don't have a problem with, you know, the regulators and all the rest of it knowing what I'm doing with my money. I'm not doing anything illegal, so I really don't care. I pay my taxes and do all the rest of it. And I definitely don't have a problem with, you know, making sure that money being used for illegal activities is, you know, monitored and we know where it's going and to who it's going. Again, so that's KYC sort of stuff. Like, I don't have issues with that. I only have issues is when, you know, regulators overstep. And again, it'll probably come at some stage, hopefully never, but all of a sudden they say, oh, we don't like, you know, your stance on something, so we're now stopping you from being able to spend money on certain things. Again, not illegal, just not what they like. That is what we don't want. We don't want money that can be controlled like that, but unfortunately... Traditional finance are not going to give up their control of money. Now, hopefully sometime down the track, we have completely decentralized money that, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know, it's hard to say. I, I like the idea of some kind of control uh, when it comes to money. And there are agencies out there that can go after people doing the wrong thing. But that's kind of where I want the control to stop. Just that they go after the people doing the bad stuff, not that they control the money and stop people from spending it how they want. You know, that's, yeah, it's that fine line. So it's very hard to, yeah, know where it all kind of comes to. But, you know, Tether doing their best uh, to try and get compliant, which is, which is good for the industry. Now, uh, maybe not on a philosoph- philosophical, I don't even know how to say that word, a philosophical, whatever uh, you know on your uh, moral stance and all the rest of it maybe you don't agree with it but uh, for the benefit of crypto in general I think it's good and I think you'll see a lot of other stable coins uh, do something similar if they want to survive right Robin Hood cryptocurrency transaction revenue slides 80% in quarter three so popular trading platform Robin Hood appears to have fallen out of favor with crypto traders in their third quarter as reveals revenue slumps. I mean, that's a lot, 80% in quarter three. But in all fairness, we had the downturn in the market. So we go back to here, quarter three, that's all of this. So it's not really kind of too, well, it's not all of this, but it's definitely part of this. So that's not all that surprising. But also, you know, there was the news about Robin Hood uh, actively selling their information of their traders, you know, to hedge funds and things like that who would counter trade. Maybe that's had something to do with it. Uh, they had a lot of money in Doge, I'm pretty sure uh, Robin Hood did, and uh, Doge hasn't performed that well. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But that is very, very interesting that they've gone down 80% in a quarter. That, that's quite substantial. All right, last but not least... U.S. regulators are looking at how banks could hold crypto assets. Absolutely they are. Of course, they've got no choice. Crypto is here. Uh, It's not going anywhere. Again, you know, they will regulate it. That's coming. And, you know, as long as it's at least reasonable regulation and not over-regulation, it is for the benefit of crypto then. You know, there's people out there who believe a completely free market, and I agree with 99% of that but again there's that small percent where I just I want somebody there who can go after people doing the wrong thing Uh, and so that's where it's not that completely free market because then you know everyone can go out and scam everyone and we don't want that that's a different story but anyway uh, Jonah McWilliams chair of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation so the FDIC said banks should be allowed uh, into the space while appropriately mitigating risk completely agree that is exactly what they need now mitigating risk again that's all the kyc uh, anti-money laundering rules you know all that kind of stuff it has to happen for it to go mainstream that's just the way it is you know you can like it you can not like it it is what it is again hopefully in the future uh, you know this is really Uh, getting hopeful that the system kind of sorts itself out and really is a fairly free market. Again, I still want that tiny little bit of, you know, governance is probably the best way. Uh, Again, not ruling so much, but, you know, there's a fine line between those. But I do want some governance of our money. Again, to go after bad players and bad eggs and things like that and make sure that they can't rip off, you know, people who work hard for their money uh, and don't deserve to be scammed. And, you know, again, 
dodgy platforms coming out that have got nothing behind them and they're just straight up exit scams that's the kind of stuff we don't want hence why regulation is needed it's just again that very fine line between what's good regulation and what's over regulation because we're never going to get under regulation you can guarantee that's one thing that absolutely will not happen all right that's it from me all right stay safe be kind to one another. Again, I am looking for Bitcoin to possibly come down a little bit over for the next few days. 57500 I would have a buy order in there. Uh, but again, there's no guarantees. Maybe that was the bottom, you know, kind of the $58,000 level. We'll have to wait and see. All right, stay safe and I'll see you next time.